Automations allow you to automate tasks in your website for your business. Let me show you everything that you need to know to get started setting these up in your website. To create your first automation, under Funnel Kit Automations, click on Automations. Next, click on Create Automation. And here you'll see a list of what we call recipes, which are out of the box done for you automations. For example, if I click on the Abandoned Cart Reminder Pro, we can see the structure of this automation. If you'd like, you could click Import This Recipe to start with this. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna return and then click Start From Scratch to show you how to create an automation from scratch, but then also so we can break down the components of the automation as we build it up. In this example, we're gonna create an abandoned cart automation. So with it named, I'll click create. Now we're in the automation builder. So an automation triggers based on an event. So if we click select an event, these are all the different events and triggers that can occur to bring somebody into this automation. So we have our categories on the left-hand side. Automations is related to the events that occur inside of FunnelKit Automations. So things like when you add a tag to a contact, you could add them into this automation and then perform actions based on that event occurring. If you're using our other plugin, FunnelKit Funnel Builder, then clicking on Funnel Builder, you will see a list of all the different events that can occur in the funnel builder to get somebody into an automation. So when they submit an opt-in form or when they end a funnel, they could be added into this automation. When they view one of the upsells or downsells, or even when an upsell is recovered. Under WooCommerce, you could add somebody into an automation when they abandon their cart, when they abandon their cart, but then make a purchase, that cart would be deemed as recovered when they purchase a specific product, when the order status changes, when you refund an item, and all the other ones that you see on the screen here. If you are integrating with WooCommerce add-ons like WooCommerce subscriptions, you can trigger an automation to occur when these events occur. For example, a subscription is created or just before renewal, when a renewal payment fails, when the subscription status changes, when the trial ends. Down here, if you're using WooCommerce memberships, when a membership is created, when the status changes, and if you're using the WooCommerce wishlist add-on, then when these events occur, you could add them into this automation. When you see events that are disabled and grayed out, that means that this plugin is not installed and activated on the website. If we were to install and activate the WooCommerce memberships plugin, then we would have access to these two events here and they would not be disabled anymore. Under WordPress, you see some other events like when a user is created or when they log in or when you update their user role. Under LMS, we integrate with LearnDash, which is a leading LMS plugin for WordPress. So if you are selling online courses using LearnDash, you could trigger an automation and subsequent events to occur within the automation based on the following actions. When a user is added to a group, removed from a group, when they enroll in a course, when they're removed from a course, when they complete a course, complete a lesson, complete a quiz, and complete a topic. You can link FunnelKit automations to your Twilio account, and when your contacts send an SMS to your Twilio number, you can then trigger an automation to occur where you do subsequent events based on receiving that SMS. Under Forms, we integrate with the leading form plugins for WordPress, WP Forms, Elementor Forms, and all the other ones that you see on the screen here. So you could add someone into an automation when they submit a form. Under Affiliate, we integrate with Affiliate WP and you can do the following actions. When an application is approved, rejected, or an affiliate signs up, you could trigger an automation, as well as when they make a sale, their affiliate status changes, a referral is rejected, or an affiliate digest. Under CRM, for more advanced use cases, if you're using a CRM listed on the screen here, you could send a webhook event from that CRM into FunnelKit Automations, and when the webhook event is received, you could trigger the automation to occur. So that covers all the different events that can occur in your store to trigger an automation to start. And an automation must start with an event. So here, let's click Select Event to return to that screen. And then under WooCommerce, Let's select customer win back and click done. Now we see a list of settings for this event and different events will have different settings. So here we could say, if the customer last ordered two months ago, but they have not purchased in the last 70 days, 
then they will be added into this automation. And we can see here that this will run every day at 24 hours. I'll click save. In an automation, if you choose the wrong event or you just need to change it, you can click the three dots on the event and then select change event and adjust as necessary. So I mentioned we're setting up a cart abandonment automation here. So I'll select the cart abandonment event and click done. And you'll notice we see different settings here for the cart abandoned event than we did with the customer win back event. For different automations, it might not make sense to allow your users to enter the automation more than one time. For example, in this case, a customer could abandon their cart multiple times. So we want to allow them to enter this automation multiple times. I'll select save. Then under that, if you click the plus sign, these are the different steps that you can add into your automation. You can add an action, a delay, a condition, split path, a goal, jump, and exit. If we click on action, on the left-hand side, we have the action categories. So messaging, we could send an email, or alternatively, we could integrate with these third-party messaging softwares and perform things inside those softwares. Under automations, we can perform actions in funnel kit automations. Under WordPress, we could create a new WordPress user, update user meta, update their user role, and some more advanced features below. Under WooCommerce, we can create and delete coupon codes, add custom fields, and in regards to the WooCommerce add-ons like WooCommerce subscriptions, WooCommerce memberships, we could perform the actions you see on the screen. Under CRM, you could perform these actions if you integrate with one of these CRMs. And under Send Data, you could send data from FunnelKit automations to external services, for example, Zapier. Membership, we integrate with Wishlist member very deeply, and you could perform these actions on your members. And LMS, with LearnDash, you could perform these actions on your students. For an abandoned cart, let's go to messaging, and we want to send an email. So with that selected, I'll click done. We'll give our email a subject line, and then down here, I'll launch the visual email builder to design our abandoned cart email. I like the look of this one here, so I'll select preview and then click import template. And to learn everything about this email builder, see our separate videos related to the email builder. For this demonstration, I'll click save, then I'll click save and close. When you're designing your automations, you'll often find that you wanna clone an action. So to do so, you can just click here and select copy. And then on your automation path, you can click to paste it wherever you want. Now we have both of those emails. But you'll also find you want to add a delay between different actions in your automation. To do that, click the plus sign and then select delay. And for our second abandoned cart email, we'll send it out in one day's time from now. For now, I'll click save. Clicking the plus sign, we could also set conditions, which creates two separate paths for our automation. I'll click add new condition, and these are all the different categories of conditions that you can set. If I click on cart, I then see further sub options. Here I'm going to select cart total is greater than $100 and click add. And now when somebody abandons their cart, if it's over $100 in value, yes, I can treat them differently to if their cart is less than $100. Also, if we click the plus sign, here we could select split path. And this allows us to A-B test two different paths in our automation. I'll name my split path, and you can choose up to three paths. I'll select two. You could write a hypothesis here for your test, and then click add. Then we could click the three dots, and copy, and then paste that over in path A. And then we could go and copy this, paste it in path B, then remove the original by clicking delete, and then delete. And then we could go into the email in path B and click, we could update the subject line and click save and close. And now 50% of people that abandon their cart will see the email with this subject line and the other 50% of people will go down path B and see our second subject line. And over time, we can click view results to see which subject line is making us the most money. When a user enters your automation based on the event, they will flow top to bottom through the different steps in your automation, eventually arriving at the end of your automation where the automation is ended and they are exited from this automation. 
Clicking the plus sign, there's a few other steps you can add to your automation. If we select goal, and then under WooCommerce, select order created, and then done, and select processing so we know that we've taken payment from this customer, if the contact does not meet the specified goal of purchasing from our store and the order is in processing status, then the contact will be held at this point into the automation until the goal is met. So here with those settings, if we click save, now when somebody abandons their cart, they will go through the automation and once they get to here, they will wait until they make a purchase in our store. And once they do that, they will continue to receive this final email and then they will exit this automation. If we click the plus sign and then jump and then not configured, here you have the ability to manually move a contact to another point in your automation. And finally, you could just exit the automation through different points in your automation. When you've designed your automation, don't forget to turn it on and make it active. On the left-hand side, this is all done under the automation workflow. If we click on contacts, active shows the contacts that are currently active in the automation, failed are those that did not successfully go through it, completed are ones that have exited the automation, and paused are ones that are held. Under analytics, and contacts, you get a detailed breakdown of all your different contact data with date range filtering. Under emails, you get your open and click-through rates and order and revenue. And under split path, you'll see a list of all the different A-B tests that you've run and the ones that are ongoing, as well as their analytics. Under engagements, you'll get a detailed breakdown of the contact as well as what they've done in this automation in terms of their engagement. And under orders, you'll get a similar breakdown, but this time focusing on purchases and what people have bought from this automation. If you're an existing FunnelKit user, jump in, give us a go, and if you get stuck, reach out to our support. If you're not already experiencing the powerful features of FunnelKit automations, then head on over to our pricing page and reach out to our pre-sales team. We're happy to help.